<clears throat> and tell me when you're ready. Check in Twitch. Got to get my mute button. This is going to be always on top. Come on, Twitch, load my stuff. I gotta do boxing and Beat Saber tonight. It's my my VR workouts. I uh, I I have a pain in my rear end, like somebody stabbing it, and so I move and I feel like like a fork going into yeah. your rear end, and that radiates down the leg. And <laughs> what on earth? And it lasts like it's really bad in bed, and then I get up, I walk around for I don't know. 20 minutes and i'm fine so last time i did a it's it's i'm nervous and every time i do another fitness workout i re-aggravate it Mm. so i'm like no exercise for me i want to walk that's what i want to do but there's still like 10 inches of snow everywhere so yeah today was a nice day we ready we are live and ready okay okay 261 okay three two one Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 261 of the Security Podcast here on the In30 Network. I'm Hayam, and Tom is down there. I'm right down there this time. Here. Oh, so if you don't know, we're doing it some way, and and Tom's doing the the magic of uh, of OBS and making us look really nice and professional. But we're literally sitting here in our desk chairs with green background screens behind us. Yep. Uh, mine's an expensive green screen, but it could be a green sheet. And I'm know. drinking what I what I assume to be uh, a clear can. I'm looking on Twitch. Yes, it is very very clear right now. So, so this, um, uh, lime bubbly water. By the way, it's it's delicious. Is it is it just water? It's it just it's, it's seltzer, right? It's just seltzer. That's it. Okay. It's if you don't know, I I've, I've cut out all I've cut diet soda out of my life. It's been like five or six years now. It is an addiction. So. I, I highly recommend it. I highly recommend finding some flavored. Don't buy LaCroix, but I mean, maybe you do, but I don't know. I shop right around here, but uh, vintage seltzer, shop right seltzer. Yeah. I'm good with all that. I, I get all the generic seltzers. Um, yeah. the This brand bubbly is fine. I guess I discovered it at work one day. Uh, whatever. It's, it's water with bubbles in a can and some flavor and no sugar. Like that's, that's really what well, I'm looking for. I have realized though, like I know we talked about diet soda before, but I, I realized that the thing I love is not necessarily like the sugar or the sweetness or anything like that. I crave the bubble. That carbonation yes. is what I need. And, and the sweet on top of the bubble makes it better, but it really is just the bubbles. And I, mm-hmm. I'll give you a, a restaurant hack when you're finally back in restaurants. Underneath the Sprite is usually a little tab that says soda. That's just the bubbles. I love it. I've, I've used so, that lots. So if you didn't know that, there it is. And I'm not going to make a five-minute Crafty Panda video on little secret hacks at <laughs> – that. that's the only one you need to know. Underneath the Sprite generally is a soda button. And underneath the uh, – the, there's a water button somewhere else. But anyway, so uh, we just got completely derailed, but that's fine. <laughs> so I, I'm going to default to Tom for the very first story because it's I, I didn't hear about it. So I'm going to let you t- let him talk about it, and we'll go from there. Yeah, so uh, there there is currently a Python CVE. Uh, now, let's explain what uh, what CVEs are. CVEs are basically uh, known published vulnerabilities. This is a really cool system um, where uh, internet citizens. This is this uh, website is run by NIST, um, uh, at least the one I'm using uh, to collect vulnerabilities with. Uh, CVE numbers, uh, and that's I'm probably giving terrible details. Regardless, um, so CVEs are basically a way of organizing and cataloging software vulnerabilities, uh, security issues, and such. So there's a CVE right now for Python, for most major Python versions, um, where you can hand it specially crafted um, 
uh, floating point numbers. Uh, and if you craft it in a certain way and the sun, moon, and stars align, uh, yeah, you could turn that into a remote code execution, uh, which is literally the worst type of vulnerability you can get. Remote code execution means that somebody can execute code on your system just by providing you some bad input, like a bad number. Uh, so this has been kind of on fire recently through a lot of different projects, a lot of different companies, a lot of people trying to patch this. Um, there are patches available. Uh, so if you are a Python programmer or if your company uses Python, make sure you're using the latest version. Just a general PSA. Uh, this vulnerability looks kind of nasty. Uh, it's not not really something that you should leave laying around. So especially if you do take in any kind of floating point numbers through, uh, you know, through forms or from your users or parsing untrusted input, um, patching this should be at the top of your to-do list this week. Not next week, not next year, not next patching cycle. Get it now. And while you're patching, um, Chrome and probably Firefox have a ton of updates. I feel like every week is a, uh, is, uh, please update your Chrome instance. It's one of those, I guess just, again, the takeaway from all of this is just stay updated. I know it's a pain, but it's really important just to stay updated. And do you want to say every Monday morning, do a check for update sweep, or is that not even good enough? Um, you know, Honestly, I don't even manually check for updates most of the time. Most of the time, because systems have gotten good enough, they've gotten better, where we don't have to go through and say, oh, well, I'm going to check for updates in every app individually. Mm -hmm. uh, now, like Windows Update, I'll just say, oh, yeah, hey, I did a thing. Uh, you should probably reboot later tonight. My, my Linux instance will pop up software updater, and it'll say, oh, hey, you have these updates. My Debian server is just do it automatically. I have them configured that way. Most software, like Chrome and Firefox, literally today just popped up and said, oh, hey, Tom, um, can you click this button and I'll, I'll restart real quick because there's an update. Like most applications do take care of themselves, which is and nice. That's what and, and you really should look, if, if you do have the ability to turn on auto updates, that's fine. Um, my friend tells me, oh, you should download betas and alphas. And I tell them, no, I don't have time to do it. I want really stable updates. They got so the new iOS update that's coming out or being betaed is some sort of watch mask phone thing where if you have your mask on it will it will uh, allow you to tap on your phone to unlock uh, tap on your watch to unlock your phone. And I'm like I want that now. I really want that because at work I have to wear a mask now. We are required even in a uh, room that's just yours and no one's going to come in. We have to wear our mask all the time and i just want that but it's beta and i don't like putting I, i'm done with beta softwares now i need stuff to work i don't have time and tom remembers this with android it was bluetooth never worked but then again nobody had bluetooth now i i need my bluetooth working i need the radios working i, I don't want to play with it but so anything i find now i try to make sure does it have an auto update feature or how can i get on some auto update track just I, update that that's one of the things you got to do i'm i'm with you i i used to be that person that like sought out all the betas uh i remember i got a a free chromebook from google like from a secret project um because i installed i think it was the the beta maybe it was a dev channel of chrome at the time just to get the latest and greatest chrome features and they had like a, a little thing up there and they say oh hey are you interested in helping us with a project click here i'm like oh yeah and that that was when you know google was cool uh or maybe i just got older and they were never cool regardless i'm with you i moved like I, it, it's basically whiplash i moved from like bleeding edge dev channels like master branch on github pages kind of stuff all the way to the lts version right like i'm i'm running ubuntu lts because i was I gonna just... say you're not bsd no, you're not no. That, you're, you're not. You like <laughs> some not, feature. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not that stable. I'm still running Ubuntu, um, but like, I, you know, I'm on Ubuntu LTS right now, and I will upgrade. You know, probably a year, maybe maybe six months before it runs out of support to the next LTS, and I'll just keep on my my cycle of using old stable software that's still getting security updates because 
I'm with you. I just don't have time for the stuff anymore. Right. When I, when I use my headphones or when I plug in a new device or when I, you know, try to use network software, I just, I just need it to work. Right. Like all the new features are cool and it's nice and things are more pretty, but, uh, frankly, I just don't have time to deal with it. Um, look, it's, it's one of those, say what you want about OS 10 and, and now actually OS 11 and the iPhone may not be cool, but guess what? It, it generally works and the nitpicky stuff that we have, and it doesn't, it does for 75% of the people, it does everything they need. And it's same with Chrome. Chrome just works. A Chromebook just works. And yes, you can do all that stuff, but that's a good mantra going forward is, is getting something that just works. All right, we're almost 10 minutes in and we want to hit our main story is LastPass is changing their free tier again. So if you don't remember, we actually, we, look, we, we like LastPass. LastPass is a password manager. Uh, we've had them on the show before. We, we've spoken really highly of them. They were the first ones to do cloud password management. And that was before cloud and password management were a thing. Basically, you, you have a browser extension. It puts in all your passwords. It works everywhere. When they first started, it was one device only. Oh, so backtracking. So what happened was they said starting March 1st, March 7th, sometime soon, it's going to be the free tier is going to allow you one device, whether it's your all desktops. So any of your desktops like Chrome. Uh, so anywhere they use a computer that has Chrome on it will work or all mobile. So all your mobile apps will be on whatever. We'll have it, but you can't share between the two which I saw as a gigantic slap in the face. I mean, and we're going to get to that in a second, but that's how they started. And they said, give us a dollar a month, 12 bucks a year, and you can have everywhere. And I happily plunked down $12 every year and said, here, take my money because it worked. It was awesome. And then others came by and they also had it. One password, one to $30 per device but it was one time dash lane went to $36 a year. And then the prices started going up. So now we're at this, I think it's, I think LastPass wants $36 a year for their, uh, for their yearly software to do all these things. And I'm annoyed because most people, I would probably guess 90% of the people just want password storage. Like, I think that's all they want on all their devices. I don't think they want the five gigs of encrypted stuff. I don't think they, or the one gig. I don't think they want to do uh, SSH keys. I don't think they want to store things or share. I think they just want their passwords. And I wish that was the free tier. Or maybe a thousand sites. Uh, you're going to tell me that's wrong or not. Maybe you get like 500 sites is, and then you have to pay from there. Then they start into subscription models and all this other stuff. So it's it's one of these things that I, I'm really starting to, I don't want to hate on LastPass because they are really good, but it's one of those, we're going to try and tell you what to do. That That's the focus today. Yeah, I've, I've had a, a LastPass family account for a long while now, and I, I usually do just the, the yearly payment up front. I know I'm going to use it for a year. I know the people on the family account are going to use it for a year. Let's just get this out of the way. It's really not all that expensive to pay for it up front. But they keep changing the pricing. They keep changing the model. They keep adding stuff that, frankly, I just don't care about. The last pass of, uh, what, like four years ago was perfectly featureful for what I wanted it to do, right? It stored passwords. Yeah. It could optionally share passwords with people. That's That's really, that's all I needed to do. Um, and we all got a little worried, um, when LastPass was, you know, bought and sold a couple times over through various companies. And, uh, it's, it's kind of showing, um, right. Like, like the, the cracks in the armor are becoming a, a little bit more apparent where LastPass, yeah, the, the only thing they do is they store encrypted blobs of stuff and hand it back when people ask for it. That is all they do. Uh, and, and frankly, like that's, that's not a bad thing, but that's all I want them to do. Um, and I, I will happily pay for them to do that, but they want to try to grow this business, make more revenue, get, you know, bigger and more embedded. And frankly, I kind of disagree with that on just the premise of the thing, right? Like the, the best way to grow LastPass is to get 
more people using LastPass and make things you know easier and more secure as time goes on. I don't need encrypted storage. I don't. I don't really need a bunch of these features that they're trying to throw everywhere. It. It almost. It kind of feels like Keybase in a way because Keybase had like one really really tight thing that they focused on, which was you know identity verification uh, and then messaging, and that's that's what they did. And they kept adding stuff. And we do use Keybase as additional features, but frankly. No one uses the Git features on there, right? They they could have never had that. And no one would have cared. Um, really, nobody wanted all the cryptocurrency spam that they were shoving everywhere. Even though, yeah, we've you know, full disclaimer, we made money on made that a lot deal. of money. Yeah, <laughs> um, but no one wanted that. Why? Why do they care? And I kind of see LastPass heading to that same road, and it's it's a little concerning. Um, yeah, you know, we've we've both kind of explored the password manager space and what things, uh, what you know, companies offer, what benefits, um, and there's a lot of competition out there. So if LastPass wants to burn bridges and you know, kind of make things harder for people, you have options, and you can always export from LastPass and import somewhere else. As a matter of fact, I do that just as kind of my data insurance, right? Like every month or so, I'll go into LastPass make an export, encrypt it myself, and throw it on a local drive somewhere just in case LastPass goes away or my data gets deleted. I've got a backup from last month, and it's not going to be too hard for me to recreate what happened since then. Well, <clears throat> I mean, with the last 15 minutes, I think we should talk about the different the different models that there are. So, look, the big games are last. Well, the big third party. So the first party ones are Chrome, Firefox, Safari. They all have their own password managers. And for the most part, I mean, they do exactly what we described. They store your passwords. And as long as you're signed into them, that's fine. Uh, that's going to cause lock-in. Okay, so Chrome. if you're on Chrome, that means you have to use Chrome everywhere which you may be okay with. I mean, if we're working from home and everything, you're on the same computer, you're doing the same thing, you can get Chrome on all your devices and you're and you're perfectly fine. That will work. Um, it's free. Firefox has the same thing. Uh, if you're in the iOS ecosystem, Safari and Keychain have that, but you have to be fully into the iOS ecosystem. So if that's... If that's one way to go, if you're if you're going to say I'm going to st uh, stick with Chrome no matter what and everywhere I go, I'm going to download Chrome and log in. Absolutely. Go with that. Where th that that's perfectly fine. It's free. But I don't like that because you are stuck. You may be out of some random terminal and it won't have Chrome. You're going to be at a library. You're going to need Chrome and you're not going to have it and you're not going to want to do this. So I always tend to tell people go the third party route. Um, and then LastPass was the big one. One password. I never liked one password. Uh, they, they got it when we asked about two factor. They they always gave some really weird answer. Eventually they relented. But it's not that's also not a bad idea but again they also have a subscription model pricing that ends up being around 48 dollars a year and and we don't want that dashlane was always expensive and then the free one the very free one but again it's based on security gui which means that it's going to look terrible and it's not necessarily hard to use is key pass which tom used but i don't think you can convince people to move from LastPass to key pass KeyPass worked really, really well for me, but I also controlled that infrastructure completely, right? So I had I had a KeyPass database, I had sync thing nodes everywhere uh, on all of my devices. If I had a device that ran sync thing, and there was like one folder with a couple config files and then my KeyPass database that would synchronize to all of my devices. So when I saved a password anywhere, within a couple minutes usually uh all of my devices had the latest and greatest version of my password database but it also required me to go full sysadmin and put sync thing everywhere uh, i finally moved back to LastPass when i moved to ios that can't run sync thing um because i needed my passwords and key pass just wouldn't cut it anymore and the key pass applications on uh on ios are hot garbage for the most part 
And there's no first party key pass app. That's the other right. thing that bothers me. That that really does bother me. I the company's not making it for like, oh, we're gonna make it so anybody can use it, but now we're trusting this random developer. I mean, key pass is just random developers, though. That's one thing to keep in mind. I know. Key pass, key pass isn't a company, they're not a service, it is just an open source project, which is why I gravitated to it. Uh, and frankly, uh, I do use key pass on a daily basis. Um just not for uh you know anything super important so then we have so then we did we actually did a show uh months ago uh so last pass got bought by log me in and then i think log me in got bought out by private equity or is that something I, yeah, else that something, somebody got bought out by something like that it, okay. it got weird so, and so last, if anything's on the chopping block, it's going to be on LastPass because I can't see it making people, I can't see it costing much, but I can also see it not making people money. And that when people, when private equity buys you out, it's for the money. And if you're not really making money, they rather not pay the people there. I bet you LastPass makes just enough to pay the people, the, the three or four engineers uh, just enough to do there. And then they add a feature to maybe bring somebody else in. But anyway, so we looked at Bitwarden and I actually, and I actually moved. I said, I'm going to try this. I actually moved to Bitwarden. I really do like it. It looks almost identical to LastPass, except it's red, instead of red, it's blue. Um, <clears throat> LastPass brings up the little asterisk next to the username uh, uh, fields. Bitwarden, you have to go to the top of the menu bar. But other than that, it's the same thing. It's a little different visually, but it's the same thing. And they, right now, knock on wood, they have a free tier and they also have the paid tiers, but the free tier is what exactly you expect on all the devices and it works. And and that's going to, if you want a free thing, that's going to be my recommendation. Um, my real recommendation is find a few people uh, <clears throat> and get a LastPass family plan. If you were on LastPass, find two disgruntled people or get somebody else in your family on it and just do it that way. Because at $48, you can get up to six people. Okay, that's $8 a person. And the good thing is, is that there's no relationship as part of this family. <clears throat> there's no like, everyone in your family can see everything or whatever it is. They're independent people with just the idea that they're loosely acquainted which is awesome uh, because that was one of the things, oh, let me get my friend. So what people used to do is with Google Play Music, when you get a family plan, come on my family plan and you can all share the same music, but you also share the credit card. This doesn't have that. This is one person chooses it. You can get a few. I mean, I would obviously trust the people that you're on, but you don't need to share anything with them. You don't need to do anything with them. They're basically independent and that should cut some cost down. So if you have, and I hope that's not, that's not stealing. I don't think that's the definite, I think we're okay by saying that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, with, with anything, read, read the terms and conditions, uh, be before you, you commit, uh, just, you know, built suspenders there. Um, the other thing that, that Bitwarden gives you is their tech is super open source. Um, like they're everything from their servers to you know I'm, I'm looking i'm looking right now uh, at their github page so i can give you an accurate listing of everything bitwarden has yeah, okay servers browsers desktop apps mobile apps web command line like it's all here the js library directory connectors that they've got for ldap branding documentation it's all open source like you can just run this stuff yourself and by the way that is a supported option on Bitwarden. If you wanted to just run the Bitwarden server in a Docker container uh, or just on your own hardware, in your own sites, in your company, at your house, whatever, if you don't trust them to hold your passwords, but you like the idea of a password manager and you want to build it all yourself, yeah, it's all right there and explicitly supported. When Bitwarden gives you the option to drop down a box and say, no, 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 you need to connect to this server over here at this address. It's really cool. I actually ran this. Um, I, it does require a little bit of cooperation from the company in its default install because it will ask you for um, basically an install key. It's it's their way of 
uh, communicating, you know, security updates. If they need to push an emergency version, they'll email you. Um, but I put in a fake email address. They didn't seem to care. Um, but you do need some cooperation to self-host it unless you wanted to hack those bits out and just take the software and find a way to run it yourself. You could do that. It's open source. Um, so yeah, I, I think my next move is going to be Bitwarden. I'm not in a hurry. Like my last, pa my last pass plan, uh, updated, I don't know, three months ago or something like that. So I've still got, I've still got months and months to figure this stuff out. Um, but you know, my next move, definitely Bitwarden. And I'm probably not going to self-host. I'm probably just going to pay for their plan. It looks like 40 bucks a year for their family plan. Um, it's pretty comparable to other places. Uh, and I like their tech. Well, I, like I said, after that episode, I, I feel like now it's 18 months that we did. I remember it was in the fall, but it wasn't last fall. So it was the year before that. So it's been over a year. I've had absolutely no problems. Um, they they simplified their website because it was hard to figure out it's a basic plan or a premium. There was a free premium plan, but now they just really simplified it. They want $10 a year. Okay, so back we're going back to the, la the old LastPass pricing or uh, $40 for a family. And here's the thing. I manage my uh, dad's passwords, uh, so I need something. He knows how to use LastPass. Can I do this move? And that's going to be my main question uh, because he, it's inelastic for him. He doesn't mind. He'll pay a lot of money for LastPass features. And so if I can get him to move and do this, I'd much rather do that because, I mean, like I said, LastPass is owned by LogMeIn and whatever it is. The money is there. They, they, got, they got bought out. They got their money. Bitwarden looks like, that, like you said, it's open source. They're trying to be there. And they're saying, hey, pay us for us to maintain it. Because, hey, we got to eat too. And I, I do like that. And and we've had, I've had no problems with it. There was an import problem. I do remember that. There was an import problem where I I pasted like all my, uh, my, my private keys, my 4096 private keys in one file. And there was like a 1KB limit and it went over. So once I figured that out, that was there. But again, nobody generally stores notes. Nobody generally stores all the features that LastPass can do. Uh, I did. And so in my export, it was a little tricky, but I figured it out and it works. Um, <clears throat> it's it's one of those. Then there's others like Keeper and RoboForm and everything else. We just haven't. I just haven't done enough to tell you those are where it's at. Because if you're going to end up paying... Pick, pick, stick with one of the big players in the game, especially with your passwords, especially with things that are important. Um, both of them on their paid plan have the the family member uh, SOS emergency. I, I do like to talk about that because we talk about how to stay private and secure. But what happens when that person needs it? Like, what happens if you if somebody needs to get your master password to actually do things? Uh, it's an emergency, whatever it is, not to hack it, but just to actually have access to it. And both of those on their paid plans have, uh, have a wait after 48 hours or two months or whatever it is of inactivity, they will contact your next person that you list there and, and say, Hey, do you have any information? Things like that. So I do like that. Um, I'm looking at the time. If you are, what I don't recommend so somebody was saying this, oh, I'm going to do LastPass on mobile and I'll do something else on desktop or something like that. I'll use Chrome on desktop and LastPass on mobile. Don't do that. Either pay or try and find one of the free ones uh, through Chrome or through your browser. But don't don't split them up. That will drive you crazy. And that's actually going to oh, no, leave... Worse. Where's the password? Did I put it in Chrome or did I put it in LastPass? And oh no, I saved it in both places, but which one is right? And now I've got to balance the two and then copy paste stuff between them. It's multiple password managers are the biggest pain ever. Don't do it. Just, yeah, just pick one and like, look, I know people who are on their phone all the time. So that's a question I have. I'm technically on my iPad. My iPad almost is my main computer with my iPhone. I may be able to just deal with LastPass just on mobile. 
because they run iOS. And I wonder if there's a way to emulate that on, let's say, the new M1. Anyway, if if that's you, if, I mean, if you're an iPad, iPhone person, and that's it, maybe you're okay. But uh, the picking one is not going to work. So either I, I, they're basically saying you have to pay. So either suck it up and pay, which I know is is tough for people, or Bitwarden is free, or try to find a way, pick one browser and stick with it and do it that way. It's not the most ideal situation, but that is what we have now. People need to make money and I, hopefully I would, not too much. I would caution against if your password manager is shopping. There, it, it looks kind of seductive, the idea of a generative password manager. Oh, hey, look, there's this password manager. I just put in the domain name, facebook.com. I, I put in my username here. And then it's going to spit out a password. I'm going to put it in the domain in my username and then like a secret key only I know. And then it's going to spit out a password. Don't, don't use those. Um, it's, it might look great and it looks random, but frankly, it's still, it's basically the same security with extra steps as just saying, oh, well, I'm going to have my standard password and then put facebook.com at the end of it. Like that's that's really all it's doing. It's doing like some hashing and, and complicated crypto stuff in the background, but it's not any more secure than that. Don't use generative password managers. They sound great because it's like, oh, I don't have to pay for anything. As long as I have access to the generator, I've got all my passwords. They're, they're not great. They're, is it better than using the same password everywhere? Yes, of course. But is it as good as just randomly generating everything and having Bitwarden or LastPass hold it for you? No. Uh, it's, you know, this is this is a password manager. Um, if, if there's one feature you really, really need in a password manager is that bulletproof security. And randomly generated passwords are fantastic. Make them long, make them completely random, forget about them, throw them in the password manager, you're done. It's super lazy and super easy and super secure. You never get that combination in security. Uh, so embrace it where you can. I will say on my iPad, there's no way to save site. So after I create a new account, I have to go through a bunch of steps to actually add the account. I will say that Bitwarden does a better job of recognizing app fill-ins so the problem is you register, I don't know, on Twitter.com, but the Twitter.com app doesn't have, the Twitter app doesn't have the LastPass fill-in and you have to go and copy it. Bitwarden does a much, in my mind, a much better job than LastPass does on that. There's ways to do it, but just generic. LastPass is a better organization method. They figure it out by looking at sites. Uh, I guess they they programmed a whole bunch of sites into different folders, which I do like. I do like the different folders. So each one has their own. Um, we'll tell you we're over time. So we'll tell you pick one, try it out. Um, the good news about LastPass, if you search how to export, they will let you export. So don't don't fear that you're going to lose all your passwords. You're not. Okay. Um, you're, you're not going to lose all your passwords. I will go. I say go to LastPass and export them, but you, you won't lose them all and start playing around with them. I My recommendation is either suck it up and pay LastPass, which is a perfectly good recommendation. Or if you really want to go free, Bitwarden, I think, is the right way to go. If uh, you really want to go free, pick your browser that you like. I'm, I'm going to assume for most people it's Chrome and do it with Chrome. And you'll also be happy for the most part. You won't get all your passwords but for the most part, it'll store the most of them for you and you'll be happy there. <sighs> Anything else? No, no, that's all I got. Look, it's sad news. Overall, it's a little sad that this is what the, what's going on. Um, I really wish apps would start with some realistic business model of trying to make money. Like you want a free tier, that's fine. Put a free tier in, but changing the goalposts doesn't really help. Uh, especially when it comes to security and things like that. Uh, I think, like I said at the beginning, I think you get a thousand passwords. Maybe that's good. And then after that, you have to pay, or here's a really limited set of features. The stuff that doesn't cost us anything on the server. But I don't know. I understand the subscription model. I wish it was cheaper, but then again, that's a different story. Anyway, with that said, we're over time. I guess we're just going to end and we will see everyone hopefully next week. 
See ya. Bye, everybody. Uh, let me turn off Twitch.